I never really thought about it before I started doing it, actually. It's not like a, I woke up one morning saying, wow, I want to be an actress. But yes, in fact, I find myself being an actress, that's for sure. movies from the very beginning uh, since day one when if, even if you are maybe five years old you understand that to make movies is to establish this very unique relationship with the camera with the movement with the limitations that movie making implies which is you can move here but you cannot move further I mean that's because you cannot be out of frame. So that's the first thing you understand. So it's almost like a, it's like driving a car, which I don't, so I can't tell you. But if I drove, I mean, I, I think I understand when I sit next to the passenger that the gesture become, you don't even think about it. Exactly the same for an actor. There's something um, automatic. Dans deux jours, les vacances. Tu retournes à Saint-Tropez Non, pas cet été. Mes parents y vont, mais moi je vais à la campagne chez ma grand-mère. À la campagne T'as pas peur de t'ennuyer Tu vois, cet été, pour changer, j'ai envie de m'ennuyer un peu. C'est the exact proof you see in my first film. Parce que généralement, les gens vont venir avec des places ou le lace maker. Mais ça, c'était Faustine. Tu sais, parfois, les gens me perdaient dans ce film parce que mon rôle était avant le crédit. And that was it. <laughs> but it still was a role in cinema. It was, yeah. Nina Companes was directing. And from the very beginning, I think I was uh, mostly attracted to work with great people, great directors, and that's really those great directors that really drew to me, to my work and to my performances most of the time. tu devrais trouver un autre travail. Tu vas quand même pas passer ta vie à laver la tête aux vieilles rombières. Plus tard, je pourrais faire des coiffures. C'est pas ton monde. C'est aussi bien que dans un bureau. Ça te plaît d'écouter les conneries de ces vieilles radoteuses pour 1000 balles par mois ça te plaît de ramasser les touffes de cheveux et de tendre la main pour 3 francs de pourboire Tu penses pas que j'ai raison Si. Quand on te lire, c'est un personnage qui est... C'est pas du tout une intellectuelle, enfin, euh, euh, elle est comme ça parce que euh, elle n'a pas le langage pour elle, elle n'a pas, elle a, elle a pas la culture qui lui, qui lui permet de s'exprimer, de passer par les mots. Ah, elle a une très grande intelligence, oui, c'est un personnage très, très profond, très, très riche, très très sensible, intuitif, qui comprend toutes les situations, qui, euh, qui ressent absolument tout, mais qui intériorise tout et qui ne s'exprime pas. Je suppose que pour une actrice, il y a tout de même une énorme difficulté à tout faire passer sans la parole, puisque dans, dans ces, le cas de ces deux personnages, ce sont des personnages qui parlent très très peu. Non, pour moi, ce n'est pas une difficulté, c'est plutôt... Euh, c'est plus facile. J'ai plus de mal à jouer des, des rôles où il faut beaucoup parler que des rôles où il faut, où il faut se taire, parce qu'au cinéma, on peut exprimer plein de choses comme ça, par des, par des regards et des, et des silences. C'est l'art du silence. Non, j'aimerais bien jouer maintenant des rôles plus vindicatif, enfin des rôles où je, je m'affirme un petit peu plus parce qu'il faut pas, faut, 
pas se laisser enfermer dans ce, dans ce genre de personnage. That was a real case. That was a case of a visual woman who killed her father and mother. The mother survived, and her case was a lot uh, was very much uh, praised by the surrealists. You know, Paul Éluard, and there is this famous quote by Paul Éluard who said she undid the the knot of the family relationships. That's what she did. <laughs> Well, I think that, first of all, it's always very reassuring and very fulfilling to shoot uh, several films with a director. When you shoot one film with a director, you always are wonder why it has asked you to shoot another one and then another one. It's always a little bit frustrating when he goes to another actress. I think they should always do films with me, but it does not always. But anyway, if with Chabrol, that was a good news. It happened almost all the time. From Violette Nozier, it was very clear that he never tried to idealize his um, characters. He, he liked to film people just the way they are, not as uh, romantic characters or heroines or, or, and whatever conflicts or fights their characters have to go through, it's more the fights they have to go through within a given political or sociological situation. So, and I like this kind of honesty towards a character. When I read a script, apart from, you know, again, the, the personality of the director and the general context of the film, I think what really drags me more into the willing to do a film is the dialogue. Okay, um, Isabel, you know what? Here, you write it. Whatever you want to say, go ahead. It's fine with me. I remember the story of women. There was this, I always wanted to do the film anyway, no matter, no matter what, you know. And, uh, but there was this line, I wanted to do the movie for this line because at one point she wants to visit her young lover who was with Peppa and Nils Tavernier, Bertrand's uh, young son. And the, the line sounds very, very funny in French. She says, uh, someone asks her, what do you want? He, he mistakes the reason why she comes and she says, je viens pas pour la grue, je viens pour le grutier. But it's difficult to explain, but it's, it's very funny the way it sounds in French, okay. And I, when, I, when I read the script, I thought, oh my God, I want to say this line. And it's like in a... In a <laughs> Madame Latour C'est moi Even in Story of Women, the character, you know, she makes abortions. She's not a very nice woman, you know, she's very cynical, she likes to make money, she cheats on her husband, I mean, nothing really nice. But without knowing, she does an act of resistance, and only when she's about to die, she's going to realize that, of course, she's an heroine, but only at, the, at this moment, you know. Y a-t-il quelque chose Ça fait mal Ça va très vite. Mais ça fait mal Non. Si on demande pardon, on va peut-être pas en enfer. I think I want what all actors in the world want from a director, which is the right uh, staging. And the, the right staging fits exactly. I, I think I wait for him to answer my questions through his staging, not verbally, not with explanations which are useless most of the time, but the, the staging gives you the right answer, the, the right distance of the camera, the camera movement, following your inner movement of a career. I mean, the, the actor is very sensitive to that, and if the director gives that to you, that's the essential, you know. In 
and, uh, and some people would talk to you a lot about the character and some would not, you know, for instance with Claude Chabrol, we would have very little conversations about the character, in fact almost none, you know. He would say sometimes just a, a line that I would grab and that I would rely on for the whole shooting, like for instance when we did Madame Bovary, I remember, and he said, I think the problem of Madame Bovary, Bovary is that she has a complex of superiority, <laughs> meaning she believes more than she is and, uh, and not less, you know. And I don't know, that drove me all throughout the film. All I know is that for me it's, I want to be as, I wouldn't say real, because I'm not sure movie is always about reality. I mean, well, I don't know if you can establish a separation between reality and truthfulness, for example. Because a film is always a construction, you know, it's always, you know, a director's view and... Uh, but I, uh, I try to be as close as possible to what I think is the truthfulness of a character. That's my only concern, actually. On peut rajouter un peu de rouge à lèvres Bien sûr. Je viens de faire un petit coucou. Mais pourquoi t'es maquillée comme une pute Well, I think in, a, in the first place is the outside um, vision of the character, which means the costume. The you know that's that's the first sign you give to an audience and to yourself too. You know the, the way you are dressed. You are, it's, it's absolutely essential. You know because that's the first step to a character and to maybe draw this limit or boundary between you and someone else. And that's also the great pleasure of being an actress because you, you have this possibility to transform yourself. It's a great pleasure. All work is, is, is different from uh, different directors, but it's never difficult to work with great directors anyway, whoever they are. And I was lucky enough, they just like me very much as an actress, you know, so that's, I think that's the, the definition of a great relationship between an actor and a director. It's not really more mysterious than this. It's just because someone likes you and he likes your face, he likes what you are and he likes to turn around you and to film you. And you and an, and an actress or an actor, let's say, feel that, and it, you feel very free. You feel very trustful, confident, and uh, you can do basically anything they ask you to. I mean, anything, whether within certain limits, of course, but a lot of things. Werner was, oh, he was, he was a poet, that's for sure. He was an extraordinary man. He was, you couldn't find two more different people f between him and me. And he was, he, he, he loved me completely as much as I loved him completely. And uh, Malina for me is, it is based on a book by Ingeborg Bachmann, great Austrian uh, poet and philosopher. And, um, and the, the, the souvenir of the shooting of Malina is just, a joy for me. Yeah. It was a blessed time. I mean, he took life as uh, the, the best way he could, you know. He was really extraordinary. And then we did this other film together called Deux, that I did with Pulogier. And uh, he was completely extravagant. He came from the opera, he was uh, also, but he was 
never theatrical in his, I mean, he, he was a great, great filmmaker, even though he was Baroque, and his, the music was very important in most of his, uh, of his films. He had such visions, and all his films are just uh, amazing, you know. He's, a, he's really a very, a major filmmaker for me, Werner Schröter. When you make a film, um, actually you make two films. So you make the, the director's film is being made, and the actor's film or the actress's film is being made as well. You know, and uh, the actress's film is like a very intimate story than that she tells to herself, and which is within the director's story. You know, and hopefully there was a coincidence between the two stories. And ultimately, of course, it is a director's film. But I think an actor always uh, chases a very personal quest when he makes a film, and very intimate and very secret and not invisible, because I think it's on screen, but it's a whole personal fantasy, you know. Si tu crois un jour que tu et si ce jour-là tu as de la peine à trouver pour tous ces chemins Bien me retrouver Si le dégoût de la vie vient en toi Si la paresse de la vie s'installe en toi Pense à moi Pense à moi Merci tu I never draw any category, a border or separation between your drama and comedies. I believe that, you know, if you do a drama, you can be funny also. Let's say, like, even the piano teacher, which is not obvious, I admit, you know, it's the, the funniest comedy in the world, but still. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, there are funny moments to it because we have this Austrian sense of humor, you know. There is an Austrian sense of humor. <laughs> and uh, there is, yes, yeah, well, you have Thomas Bernard and you have Karl Kraus, for example, and I think Michael Haneke is in the line of those people. And if you do comedies, you have some dramatic moments. So I believe that, you know, uh, yes, I'm often asked also, uh, you know, why I, if I prefer to do comedies or dramas. And for me, it doesn't really matter, you know. I mean, you, whatever you do, it's always possible, yes, to put a bit of tragedy in comedy and a little bit of comedy in tragedy. So I don't really remember Michael Anoka talking to me about anything for the character. Only he, when he gave me the script, he told me, if you don't do it, I won't do it. That was enough to attract me. <laughs> <laughs> enough, you know, because an actress is always, you know, like to be complimented. And I hardly read the script, I remember. I said, okay, it's enough for me to do. Then on my way to the shoot in the plane, I read the script and I thought, oh my God. But it was too late because the plane was already landing. <laughs> and, and I had to do it, you know. Michael Haneke est à la fois d'une rigueur, d'une précision quasiment euh, obsessionnelle, mais pour le meilleur. Euh, moi, quand je le vois cadré, quand je vois ses cadres, parfois, il n'est pas du tout euh, gardien de son territoire, Michael Haneke, sur un tournage. Au contraire. Non, pas sur la tête, ils sont là-bas Il 
on aime beaucoup que les acteurs euh, viennent regarder le combo. Parfois même, ils l'exigent. C'est un, un outil technique comme un autre et que euh, c'est parfois plus facile de le regarder et puis d'expliquer à l'acteur euh, voilà, comment ça se passe dans le cadre et comment il faut rectifier les choses pour que ça se passe mieux. Bon, le cinéma, c'est à la fois le cadre et le mouvement. Euh, et le cadre, c'est essentiel pour lui, surtout pour un séance comme lui qui, qui une fois qu'il l'a trouvé, qui n'en qu change pas beaucoup. Enfin, parfois, il peut changer. Je ne dis pas qu'il ne fait jamais de champ contre champ. Mais souvent, euh, il trouve un cadre. Et puis, dans ce cadre unique, se passent plein de choses. Donc, on le voit chercher ça. Et je trouve ça toujours très intéressant et assez fascinant à observer. Car c'est là que tout se passe. Dans cette, et parfois, il, cherche, il va chercher à 5 cm près le cadre idéal. Moi, je n'ai jamais parlé de mes personnages avec euh, Michael Haneke. Euh, en plus, il part du principe que quand il demande à un acteur de travailler avec lui, c'est en général, l'acteur a à peu près compris son rôle. Alors, Michael Haneke, lui, euh, il a une toute autre considération pour les acteurs. Voilà. Il pense que les acteurs sont des êtres pensants, doués d'intelligence, et il fait confiance à ça. of investigation and I don't like to lock myself in my own country because the, the more you push the borders and the better chances you get to, to fight many people and that was always my idea of, of cinema you know to push as far as I could you know the the possible territories where to find great people and and also for me the the cinema was always connected in a way to the idea of traveling you know because I mean when you do a film it's a way of in traveling in yourself in an inner kind of uh, trip but uh, I like when this uh, idea of, of traveling is, is in as a double significance you know and so you travel in yourself but you also travel in the in the first sense of the word yeah. sometimes I mean you you get uh, praised and admired for what you do and you think that it's only about you know choices but sometimes you make choices you, you do what you do because you can't do anything else in a way um, I don't know When I look at my itinerary, I think I was, I didn't have any other choice to be curious, to, to be willing to work abroad with certain people. I always felt, even my, in my own country, at the, I, let's say I'm a well-known actress, I work with great people, but I feel uh, at the center, but I also feel um, on the side most of the time. Which I think, it, yes, it's, it's uh, interesting. I think it gives you a lot of uh, curiosity too, in a way. Why do you take pictures? Because the only way to change things is to look at everything again very slowly. That sounds very nice. I mean, everything is good for me, actually. I don't, I don't have any, you know, if there is a script, it's okay. If there is not a script, it's okay too. I mean, for, with Hong Song Su, which I cherish, most, uh, not most, but uh, a lot, you know, the, this Korean director I've been working with, there was no script. He would give me the lines, the, the, not in Korean, at least, but <laughs> that I couldn't do, but <laughs> in English. Each morning we shoot the film.
just to say that cinema is such a versatile uh, media that it can go from the shooting of Heaven's Gate in seven months to the shooting of in other country that we shot, believe it or not, I, I hardly dare they sing it in nine days, you know. So, and it's all about doing movies, it's, all, it's always cinema. And that's what I really like most, it is to explore all this, you know, immense versatility, variety, not only in, uh, in, in, in inspiration and in subjects, but just in, in doing the films, you know. I think about it, it's growing, it's, uh, I just read the script once, and I'm, you know, that's enough. I'm just, it's growing slowly and slowly, and then comes the moment when you shoot the film, and it's all about this, present time, that it applies so many, many little events, you know, mainly, of course, the mise-en-scene and the camera movements, and uh, sometimes you would, you would find a, a, a question, an answer if the camera comes closer, and sometimes you would find a, a different answer if the camera is a more uh, longer distance shot, you know. So it's a language, and it's a conversation, like what we do now. On avait tellement d'espoir dans les troupes que le gouvernement a envoyé ici. On faisait confiance aux Philippins, aux troupes du gouvernement. On pensait qu'ils nous délivreraient. Mais je, mais j'ai l'impression, j'ai l'impression que le, le gouvernement Philippe ne fait rien, ne fait rien pour nous, pour nous sauver. C'est un mystère pour nous. I met uh, Brillante Mendoza briefly in Cannes when I was the president of the jury. A few months later, we met again in, in São Paulo, in Brazil. All of a sudden, he asked me if I would like to be in a, in a movie, and, and then he said, and why not in my next movie? I said, of course. So my name is Derez. She is a social worker, and she's been caught as uh, well as the other hostages into this abduction. The shooting of that film is way beyond anything I've known before. I've never taken a helicopter before. How do you like it? Well, <laughs> so long, yes. But the doors were open, so we could have fell in the sea. Oh my God, that was scary. It will remain something quite extraordinary in my life. Uh, I don't think cinema can make politic in the strict sense of the word, but on the other hand, I think everything is politic. So a movie, uh, if it goes into in the people's individual itineraries and stories, becomes political in its, in its own way. J'ai du travail à proposer, il faut finir la récolte de café. C'est tranquille chez moi, il n'y a jamais eu d'ennui. Mais qu'est-ce que vous faites Vous allez où là C'est pas bon de rester. Pourquoi tu ne peux pas écouter bah, Attendez, je vous demande juste une semaine. Sinon le café sera foutu. Madame Vial L'armée française s'en va Nous allons partir Speaking about specifically um, white material, you know, to speak about you know, um, something very specific between this white woman when the, the revolution happens in the country, even if it's an uh, uh, imaginary country. And Claire Denis really wanted to um, describe the point of view of someone who goes uh, in one minute from the, um, the power to the victim, but without, she, she didn't try to attempt to say this is bad or this is good. She just wanted to make people understanding why for example, in this case of th this woman was viscerally attracted and attached to this piece of land and why she wanted to stay there. And uh, so, in a way, she really uh, blew all the um, um, caricature and definitions of, you know, who is good and who is bad. And that's what you expect from film, you know, to make people think. And, uh, and that's already very political, you know, when you make people think about and when you s locate your story or your um, characters in some 
very specific and very loaded context, you know, that's very political. But it's not something that, you know, I ferociously seek in the morning, you know, I'm going to do a, film, a political film. No, each film brings up a vision, you know, and that's political in a way. Each, I mean, certain, let's say, great films bring up that vision. was really good. Driving like that true hits me up. He's a man's horse. He's not timid. James, am I really pretty? You never answer anything personal. Heaven's Gate, that was a real American film with so many people, so much time, so much inspiration too, because I think the movie is a real masterpiece. I was there for two months and I happened to stay seven months. And whenever, when I see that, you know, I can see how um, a great, great artist Michael was. And, uh, and the music just bring my tears to my eyes because the music was so inspiring, so, Beautiful. I mean, there is such poetry to the film, you know. I mean, the film is, is like a huge $60 million poem, which is a bit too much, of course, to make to write a poem, but that's what it is, actually. It's a poem, you know. And uh, also, it was wonderful for me because I felt like, you know, it, it was also, let's say, a Western, you know, whether it was an anti-Western or whatever it was. It was also a Western in the sense that I was riding horses, shooting the guns, and it was like a summer camp, actually. I mean, we, every day, we... <laughs> We would know how to play the, dance the balls and, and uh, driving the carriage. As to, it's me eh, who drive the carriage. I mean, nobody was sitting under my feet to do it, you know. So I had to learn how to do this, and it, the whole thing was absolutely amazing. And we all felt that we were doing something exceptional, and I think we did actually, no matter what was the future for the film. I think it was exceptional. I'm, I'm quite happy with what I did in America, actually. I, I mean, it's exactly the same line I follow in my country, in France, or in Europe, let's say, which is a really a director's line, you know? Mm -hmm. So having worked with people like Michael and Hal Hartley, David O. Russell and Curtis Hansel, yeah. I think I can be proud with that list. I mean, these are really good, wonderful directors. And so I was, you know, even though I worked with few American directors, I'm really happy with those I've been working with, actually. J'ai quelque chose à vous dire. Je cherche une façon simple et, et naturelle de, de vous le dire, mais j'y arrive pas vraiment. Alors, euh, voilà, j'ai été agressée chez moi. Je crois que j'ai été violée. I'm so thrilled that I was able to work with Paul Robert. I mean, for me, it's a really a major director and uh, I've, I discovered his work a long time ago when I saw first uh, Turkish Delight and he was meant to do that film you know he's uh, because the, the film combines and or the, the book did already you know the uh, combined several genres several types of, of films you know it goes from comedy to tragedy to from the Hitchcock 
a thriller to the psychological portrait of a woman and, and he's a master in combining uh, all these different types of making movies and, uh, and yet with connections, you know, it's not like, you know, you have four different films within the same film, but he's really extraordinary. I'm not intimidated by people I meet in, in work, no, I don't think so. Because I, I think that being in a creative process uh, um, operates almost like a, a shelter. It gives me confidence, it gives me, you know, so I'm not, I can't say I'm intimidated. For me, theater, making movies would be a nice ride as opposed to theater that would be climbing a very high mountain, you know. But the view is spectacular. It requires a lot of, a lot of uh, energy, but it's the same actually. An actress on stage or in, in, on screen, it's uh, deep inside, it's exactly the same for me. I, I like to experiment the stage as a total space of freedom, and this is what I do. No matter what I play, or if, even if I play a classic, or you know, I like for me to be f as free as possible and not to. Uh, to draw barriers or whatever, you know. I, I, I think for me, theater is a, is always to go against convention. There is no theater worthwhile unless you go against convention because it's the, it's the, 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 it is convention by definition. So all you have to do when you do stage work is to go against convention. I was very, very, also, I feel very privileged. Also a little bit responsible for it because I really went for those people, but to have worked with such amazing people like Bob Wilson or Peter Zadek, who is a great, great German di stage director. Bob Wilson, with whom I've worked a lot, I always keep saying, Acting, by definition, is improvisation, which is, is telling for me. Yes, it is right. Acting is improvisation. So, you know, real improvisation, it's, it's very rare, actually. When you really make up your lines, when you reinvent the text, you can do it in, in certain situations with very great directors, but most of the time you don't do it. You pretend that you improvise. That's the least that you can do as an actor, of course.
Phaedra, which is not Phaedra, it's Phaedras with an S. It's a triptych work, kind of montage, assemblage of several texts around the figure of Phaedra, including Sarah Kane's Phaedra's Love, with, and I did a previously 448 Psychosis. So this is a different play by Sarah Kane, and there is a text by Sarah Kane, there is a text by a uh, Lebanese Canadian writer, Wajdi Mouhad, and there is a text it's by Koitsi, the great uh, South African writer, and it's all, you know, montage of text around Phaedra. And this is my second work with Christoph Balikowski, who's I did Streetcar uh, with Christoph already. I was sure he was going to bring his own vision to the play. After we decided to do the play, he told me that he was going to ask André Chirard, who is a great Polish actor, to play uh, Kowalski. And I thought that was a, a wonderful idea to have a, 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 a Polish actor who speaks with a Polish accent in that role, you know. Uh, it really adds to the authenticity to the play and to the characters. But uh, just to say that, you know, those adventures are completely unconventional with those people that I, I had with, uh, you know, people like this. She is very kind. She's beautiful. She's good. We're not ingrates. Every night in our attic, we kneel and pray for her, just like we've been taught. We never speak out of turn. We're always very professional. And it's killing us. But when you play in... You are almost a foreigner to yourself. I mean, it's a very different perception of yourself when you express yourself, even if I speak English. I mean, I'm not... It's not my language, my language, you know. So it's not something. It's it's interesting and something. It gives you freedom, but something it doesn't, you know. It's it's certainly a, a very rich but complex adventure, and rich sometimes very enhancing and sometimes very difficult and very, you know, it's both. But maybe I will do it again. Plus, I was doing that was speci special too because I was doing a French play in English, so I said. Uh, okay, it's my author, <laughs> but it's their country. <laughs> so, you know, all mixed feelings about it. The mother is part of a trilogy, the father, the son, and the mother. I read it in English in the first place. I hadn't seen it in France when the, uh, the production, the French production was on. And um, someone, a, a producer from here, Jeffrey Richard, uh, asked me to read it and asked me if I would like to do it. And in fact, I loved it. I thought it was a great role, a uh, great possibility for an actress to go from something very funny and to something very sad. I mean, it covers a great, great range of emotions and irony and humor. I thought the, the role was really very complete. And so I decided I would do it. I hadn't seen um, any other Florian Zeller's plays before, but he's a really great writer. As soon as we started uh, rehearsing with Trip Kalman, the director, in the rehearsal room, very quickly, I think the writing of the play, the language, carries the potential uh, of this uh, mix of being funny and being sad and being uh, was very much there and in fact it's something I really uh, I found very very early when we started rehearsing. I act just as I am, whether it's on stage or in films, including when I do classic, and that's 
if, if I do Marivaux, for example, I, I, I do it as you know, naturally as possible, and I think it's the best homage that you can pay to an author, even if he's a classical author. It's, um, it's what I like to do on stage, just be a, more a person than a character. It's more difficult sometimes on stage because on stage you are most of the time characters because also you play um, um, pre-existing characters most of the time. If you play classic, people have certain representations of Fidra or Marivaux or whatever it is. So I like just to to be my to be me, and you know, because it's me. So <laughs> not to be someone that does not exist. Tu sais bien que je joue Hamlet en mars à l'Odéon. Mais attends, 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 attends. Tu, tu joues euh, dans Hamlet en mars Ah non, 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 je joue pas dans Hamlet. Je suis Hamlet. Je joue Hamlet. Bah, oui, Hamlet, c'est moi. Ah bah c'est formidable. Bah oui, c'est formidable. I, I don't think in terms of how to bring a life to a specific character or... Well, let's say sometimes, yes, I can like a book. But if it doesn't go with the vision of a director, it's hard for me to just to have a you know a wish or a dream without having the vision of a of a of a director well yes in, in the theater more you know because the theater you have all these you know mythical characters like you if you if you are a stage actress or you may want to to play Chekhov or Moliere or Shakespeare uh, I've never played Chekhov myself for example and of course that remains a, a, a wish you know to to play Chekhov I don't have dreams, no. I have dreams when I sleep, but I don't have dreams when I'm wide awake. Uh, I'm very pragmatic, you know. Usually what you dream never happens, you know, so I just take whatever comes in the way. I turn them into something uh, nice, you know, but I don't have these kind of dreams. was himself quoting Grotowski and then I'm <laughs> quoting Peter Brook saying, quoting Grotowski and maybe later on somebody will quote me saying uh, and so forth he said, uh, acting is not something between you and uh, your partner, it's not even something between you and the audience, it's not even something new between you and yourself it's something between you and something very mysterious be above yourself mm. he didn't mean God, no no he, he meant what he meant, something mysterious about yourself, which I think is quite true. I'm not an artist, ma. I'm just a, a go-between, you know, between a, a text and I'm just an interpret, you know. I don't believe actors are artists. Well, actually, I think very few people are artists anyway, but certainly not actors. I think whatever life you have, it's always so different when you feel it, when you leave it from the interior. It's very, very different from what you hear. It makes me happy when people, when I hear people, you know, being touched by certain roles or by certain films. I mean, I know what it means because as a spectator, I get touched myself, you know. I know the value of doing movies, you know. I know what it is to read a great book or mm -hmm. to see a great film, or to see a great play, it's very important. It keeps people alive.